everybody. This is DJ Paulie B, otherwise known as the Pop Music Freak. Hope you're having a good day. I uh, wanted to do a video on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame since we just had the induction ceremonies this past Sunday in Cleveland, which was a fun ceremony. Everybody from Jay-Z to Tina Turner, Todd Rundgren, the Go-Go's, and some few other artists got into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Now that those they're clear from the crazy list of artists that probably deserve to be in that we'll never seem to get to. Um, I want to give you an update on the list that I have of the top artists that I feel deserve being Rock and Roll Hall of Fame who aren't there yet. If you want to see, I got my spreadsheet on over here on the screen. I'm going to go over the list. What I'm going to do first, as you see on the left, we have some numbers. The artists that do not have numbers are artists that I feel are very deserving, that do not qualify yet. Now, I'll go over who's qualifying for this coming year. To me, there's one short, short thing, Rock and Roll Hall of Famer going in next year, that is going to be eligible for the first time. Several artists who, who will most likely get serious consideration in the years to come. As you can see, I'm going to start right here. Right now, I have Taylor Swift listed as the most likely of those artists. Uh, the list does not include Eminem because he will be available, eligible next year, and I think he's almost a guarantee to get in. Uh, among those that I think are guarantees in the future, Taylor Swift is eligible in 2032. Uh, Kanye West is 2029, along with Beyonce. Rihanna is 2028. Drake, 2035. Adele, 2033. And so on, as you can see, Justin Lee. Got a uh, Coldplay. Of course, the only band that can even somewhat be considered rock is maybe Coldplay. <laughs> Everyone else is straight pop, but that's the way pop music music has gone. After the Foo Fighters, there's not too many bands I can think of that are eligible, that should be eligible for Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, that are going to get in. For one example, 2022, we'll also have um, Matchbox 20 eligible. I don't think they did enough to be considered Definitely not Nickelback. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go down the list and do a countdown. The 50 artists that I think are eligible to get in that should get in someday. It's my opinion anyway. Number 50 is Alanis Morissette. Obviously, big time influential act of the 90s into the early 2000s. Number 49, Thin Lizzy, of course. The album Jailbreak. Boys Back in Town. Great stuff. Uh, I think they deserve a chance to get in someday. Tribe Called Quest, a very influential rap group. Um, they've been eligible since 2016. They're number 48 on my list. 47 in the Are You Kidding Me end of rock circles, Ozzy Osbourne. Come on. His solo career has made him above and beyond the success of Black Sabbath, which was one of the most influential and greatest heavy metal bands ever, as I freely admit. Number 46, Cindy Lauper. For those looking to get female artists that had talent and had some hits and had some extreme popularity, looking at Cindy Lauper. She needs to be considered at some point. Number 45, Joe Cocker, one of the greatest rock singers of the 60s and 70s, into the 80s, into the 90s, actually. <laughs> Four decades. All right, he's a lot more than just you are so beautiful, okay? Or Up Where We Belong. Those of you that only know those songs by him have missed out on so much. You need to go back to these albums. Read it. Hear his albums. He was an incredible vocalist. Number 44 is Sheryl Crow. From 1994 to about 2003, no female pop artist had more big hits than Sheryl Crow. And pop, anyway. New York Dolls, I have them at number 43, definitely hugely influential. A lot of bands copied their style afterwards, and that's the truth. Number 42, happy to see Dr. Dre inducting LL Cool J this past Sunday. Come on, <laughs> Dr. Dre. There'd be no Snoop Dogg, there'd be no Eminem without him. And I think if we're talking about Eminem being automatic next year, uh, Dr. Dream should not be falling too far behind in the pecking order of rap artists, for sure. Number 41, Dionne Warwick. Back Rack David. There'd be no Back Rack David if it wasn't for Dionne Warwick. She was, I mean, of course, leaned more in a very soft, 
pop direction, more than rock and roll, of course. But her, inf her influence cannot be ignored. And it was definitely, if you're going to go in a more pop poppy direction with some of the inductees, as we've seen people like Neil Diamond and ABBA get in, I think you need to really consider her. And I don't have them on the list, but the Carpenters. I know they're soft. They know they're white bread, soft, 70s, easy listening superstars. But if you're going to go in this direction and you can start acknowledging the softer influences on pop and rock and roll, Jan Wallach, Carpenters. They're not in the top 50. They probably just missed them on my list, I think. Anyway, let's keep going. Monkeys are number 40. Don't laugh. Who was the biggest selling act of 1967 in American pop music? No, it wasn't Aretha Franklin. No, it wasn't the Beatles. No, it wasn't the Rolling Stones. It was the Monkees. They sold more records and earned more weeks at number one on the chart than anybody else. I know that's just one year. TV show is influential, of course. And even though they didn't play their instruments, they were very influential and very, very popular. I think they deserve at least a nomination at some point. I hope you agree. Anyway, let's keep going. Number 39 is War. Throughout the 70s, they were one of the biggest R&B pop bands out there. West Coast sound was huge. They had the Latin influence. Probably next to Santana, they may have been the most, the second most influenced band with Latin sounds. Disco owes them a nod, for sure. Some of their hits. Uh, they deserve to, uh, some another nomination at some point. Number 38, one of the most overlooked female artists ever, Carly Simon. Her 70s and early 80s are a dream for any artist. And her songwriting ability, she wrote virtually everything she ever sang. Can't be ignored. You're so vain. One of the most remembered songs of the 70s. That alone should push her forward. But it hasn't happened yet. Hopefully will while she's still alive. All right, 37, Devo. Cleveland, Cleveland Rocks, huge influence on the new wave sound of the 80s in the USA. Whip it good. Number 36, Weezer, probably most influential pop, new rock bands of the late 90s. Come on, Buddy Holly's a great tune. Sweater Song, favorite hash pipe, but I don't do hash, I promise. <laughs> anyway. Number 35, Snoop Dogg, hello, what does he have to do, what do he have to do that he hasn't done already to be famous enough to get into the Hall of Fame? Someone tell me. Number 34, Salt and Pepper, probably the most influential female rappers ever, 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 ever. Queen Latifah probably ranks with them, but they had a lot more hits, so I think they need to be considered soon. Number 33, the MC5. Detroit punk band, a Detroit punk band, seven years, six years before the Sex Pistols. Definitely an in, in influence, they get the points. <laughs> Number of hits, you know, uh, outside of Kick Out the Jams, honestly, I don't even know another song I did. And I've been a music fan since the day I was born, which was a long time ago. Anyway. Number 32 is Motorhead. Come on, Ace of Spades, man. Ace of Spades. It's a shame they didn't get them in while the lead singer and leader of the band was still alive. But, you know, later is better than never. For sure. Number 31 on my list is, yes, I know, country artist primarily, Willie Nelson. But he's an old-time legend. And he wrote some pop classics. Hello, crazy about Patsy Cline. Is there anyone out there who does not know that song? Anyone that's been in a karaoke bar has heard the songs that he's written. On the Road Again. <laughs> so, uh, so many great songs. Uh, his remake of um, Always On My Mind was a huge pop hit. And, you know, we'll ignore Two Old Girls I've Loved Before. Okay, put that on the side. That's not rock and roll. <laughs> but Willie Nelson, I think, is enough of a legend to be considered. For, the whole, for any whole thing. Anyway, number 30, George Michael. Are you people kidding me? George Michael, between Wham and his solo career, he had 10, 10 number one pop hits in the USA. From 1984 to 1992. 
one of the biggest pop acts of the period, probably one of the most favored British bands for a few years with Wham. It's a shame that he died young, but come on. The guy was a genius. The guy was incredibly popular. He needs to be considered. That's a joke. Probably should be rated higher on my list. 29. Eric B. and Rock Hem, one of the most influential rap acts we've ever seen. Was there a better rapper than Rock Hem? Not many. Not many in the same world with him. That's for sure, man. Paid in full. <laughs> Come on. I. I uh, did a lot of DJing starting in the 90s, and I played the living crap out of that, even though it was probably five to ten years out of style already. I kept playing the damn thing. <laughs> That's how good it was. You know, it's you know, amazing. My phone fiend is a pretty damn good tune, too. I know my jams. <laughs> anyway, number 28, another absolute joke, in my opinion, Phil Collins. I know some of his songs were more softer in rock. Into the ballad end of things. But come on, has there been more influential drum beats than in the air tonight? You you name one that wasn't used more in, in the 80s than that one. It's funny how those those five seconds, they're probably more important than most of his hits. But he had some big ones, some big hits. Another day in paradise. Against all odds, the studio, one more night, he had a lot of big hits. I think he needs to be nominated. Number 27 on my list is Boston. Come on, is there a bigger debut album than anyone ever had than Boston's? It was all over the radio for that whole year of 77. And uh, yeah, they, they didn't put out too much after that. But all three of those, their big albums were as good as anybody's for a decade. I think they need to be nominated. You know, 20, uh, 26. Where's, oh, we skipped one there. Okay, I'm missing one. So, you know what 26 is? 26 is Cher. Cher? Cher's not rock and roll. Uh, come on. Who else is still re recording that had their first hit in 1965? She basically has had a 50-year career. Ups and downs, ups and downs. Finally, four different comebacks. With all different styles of music. In terms of influ influence on other female artists, can't ignore her. You just can't. Um, number 25 on my list is the Commodores. Why uh, the Commodores? Because I, I don't think they're going to put Lionel Richie in as a solo act. Because he's more very soft rock into adult contemporary artists. Most of his solo career, his biggest hits are mostly ballads except for All Night Long. Um, I think the bands was probably a huge influence in the 70s on a lot of 80s acts. The combination of funk to ballads. Uh, and they, they were just the biggest small town acts, second half of the 70s, first half of the 80s. So I think they deserve the credit, maybe more than him solo. If there was a pop music hall of fame, he'd, he'd be living in it, for sure. That, that's my opinion on that. 24 on my list is another R&B act from the 70s, The Spinners, who definitely dominated the radio in probably from 72 to 77. Had a month and several big, big hits. And they were very influenced. They were very much a Detroit band with a Philly sound. And it's a good combination for sure. Sure, a lot of great childhood memories hearing those songs. For sure. Okay. Let's keep going. Number 23 is Oasis. I think next to Nirvana and Pearl Jam, uh, they're one of the most influential 90s bands. I kind of think, you know, last year might have been too soon to nominate them because of all the other deserving acts. But I think Oasis deserves a shot. Even though those the two brothers <laughs> couldn't stand each other, they created some amazing UK, UK rock in the 90s. So... The 23 on my list. 22, Cool in the Gang. I put them a little bit ahead of the Spinners and the Commodores because their career was actually longer. They put out their first records in 1970 and kept going and were very viable until the late 80s. In fact, they had two top 10 hits in 1987, which is a pretty long run for any bands on the charts for certain. And you can't ignore Jungle Boogie. 
Jungle Monk Boogie was one of the most funkiest early disco tracks I've ever heard. And, was, and then they were able to go from that to a song like Celebration, which ended up being a huge anthem in 1981. And then you have other hits like Cherish, great love songs like Cherish and Joanna. And those tunes, they were an amazing band. And they deserve their shot, the whole thing. Number 21, probably nominated more than just about any band ever, Chic. Uh, Le Freak, Good Times. Just those two songs alone made disco what it was, certainly. Even though they kind of were slightly late, late to the party. Yeah. But even though Nile Rodgers has been already inducted for his musical excellence, the band, the group, was an amazing group. Tony Thompson was an amazing drummer. Yeah. So I think that they're number 21 on my list. They may not get in because they've been nominated so many times. I don't know if they'll get another chance, but I think they deserve it. Number 20, Warren Zevon. Yes, his only hit record was Werewolves of London in 1978. We know that. But his songwriting was amazing. And think about the artists that covered his work. Everyone from Jackson Brown to Linda Ronstadt. Um, and some several other acts from the Asylum Electra group of artists. Um, he was very influential. You gotta listen to Excitable Boy. He, you will def- if you've never heard that song before, you'll definitely get a kick out of that song. It was on the same album as Werewolves of London. I think he was definitely very underrated as an artist. But not underrated as a songwriter. He was amazing. So I think he deserves a shot. Number 19 on my list is Motley Crue. Come on. 80s into the early 90s. Who else was bigger in terms of the hair metal band craze? You have Bon Jovi, who's in. You have Poison, who probably deserves a shot at some point. At least one nomination. One shot. See what happens. Motley Crue were the darlings of MTV, as much as Bon Jovi was. Bon Jovi had the bigger hits and more of them. I think they deserve a nomination. I mean, the fan vote. You won, didn't they win the fan vote one year? Like last year? Hello? <laughs> Give them a shot. Come on. Number 18. This is mind-blowing. One of the most influential new wave fun party bands that's ever been. B-52s. Love Shack, Rome, Rock Lobster, Private Idaho. Those are songs that everyone, just about everyone knows. And they stay together a long time. And then we've been very, very, very popular in their own way. They definitely deserve a nomination. I can't believe they've never been nominated. Number 17, Jethro Tull. Yes, the guy plays a flute. But they also made some of the best progressive rock of the early 70s. And uh, sure, they only had two top 20 hits, Bungle in the Jungle, and uh, 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 there, was, there was another song, I forgot. I keep forgetting it, forgive me. In the comments, tell me the name of their, their other top 20 hit. It was, uh, oh, Living in the Past, never mind. Living in the Past was the other hit. But then they had other great stuff, Cross-Eyed Mary and Teacher, and of course the all-time classic Aqualong. Come on. They deserve to be nominated, it's a joke. They've been eligible since 1994. Anyway, number 16. We have a combination. All right. So we have a combination of the Joy Division and we have New Order. People who don't know the bands, Joy Division had a lead singer named Ian Curtis. Uh, they were start, just starting to have a little bit of success around 1980. Ian Curtis had a whole lot of trouble in his mind. He ended up taking his own life, which is very sad. Because the guy was talented, and, and as the Joy Division, they probably would have had a lot of success. But what happened is after his death, they decided, let's not break up, let's stay together. Let's get somebody new in the band, and let's keep going. Just one of us are going to have to figure out who wants to sing. And, uh, you know, and uh, Mr. Sum- uh, God, Sum- Sumner didn't really want to, but he took the job. And he, was, he did an okay job, and they ended up writing some amazing dance music and new wave music and ended up what was supposed to be let's try this for another year and see what happens ended up into a career that spans three decades uh with all-time dance classics like blue monday and temptation and perfect kiss and bizarre love triangle and round and round uh they had a pretty amazing run even though they weren't pop chart darlings they were dance chart champions in the usa 
That's for certain. Blue Monday is still one of the biggest selling 12-inch records of all time. Don't ignore that. I think they deserve to be in just because of their, their dominance in that time period. From, 80, from 82 to 89, there was probably no one bigger in terms of British electronic dance bands. Pesh Mode was a competition, of course. And they were in, by the way. Don't forget that. That's why these guys watch these guys. I think they'll get their chance soon. Okay, number 15. In another, you got to be kidding me. Uh, they sold 80 million records and you still haven't nominated them. We have Foreigner. Let me name a few all their top 10 hits in the USA. Feels like the first time. Cold as ice. Hot blooded. Double vision. Or urgence. Waiting for a girl like you. 10 straight weeks at number two on the charts, by the way. Uh, I want to know what love is. Say you will. And I don't want to live without you. They had top 10 hits from 1977 straight to 1988. It's a pretty good run. And yeah, people say, oh, the corporate. Yeah, well, Journey's in. When, when's Foreigner's turn? You know, wait for Lou Graham to die before they get in? Come on. Let's do this. Number 14, Iron Maiden. Hello, heavy metal. Big, one of the biggest selling heavy metal bands ever, ever. Iron Maiden. Just for Run to the Hills, I want them to get in. <laughs> yeah. Two Minutes of Midnight. Pretty damn good classic, too. Come on. I'm, I was more of a pop guy, but I'd be banging my head to Iron Maiden in the 80s. <laughs> Number 13 on my list is Outkast. Come on. What a rap group. Think about all the rap acts that have come after them that have, in some ways, you know, did some similar music you know, to what they did. Jackson, Hey Ya, Hey Ya was the biggest hit of, almost the biggest hit of 2004. Only um, uh, Usher's Yeah was a bigger hit on the charts that year. The Way You Move was the B-side of Hey Ya. That's an amazing double side. And they did a lot of other great stuff. Roses was pretty cool too. Definitely a great, probably one of the greatest acts come out of the Atlanta hip-hop invasion. Okay, number 12 is the Eurythmics. Andy Lennox and Dave Stewart didn't stay together a long time. They were big from 83 to about 89. But Sweet Dreams have made it this. It's an amazing old time, classic, new wave dance song. It sells love as a stranger to me. I always thought that song was underrated. Um, they were great together, and I think they deserve a shot. They've been waiting since 2007. Anyway, let's keep going. Number 11 on my list is The Smiths. No, they never had a top 40 hit in the USA, but everything is not graded on, on the number of hits you have. It's graded on how much of a following you have, how many fans love and adore you, and how many fans still play records almost 40 years later. Uh, how Soon Is Now is one of probably the greatest B-sides ever. It was a big, big record in the UK, and it was big enough here in the US to still get to get played on a lot of new wave retro stations. They were a great band, and Morrissey was definitely a vocalist worth listening to. I kind of liked his style. <laughs> All right, so now we're in the top ten on my list. We're up to Rufus with Shaka Khan. Yes, I know they've been nominated several times and have not gotten in, but there's still another great. 70s R&B band that is underrated, you know, they've uh, been amazing. They were wrote so they had hits with songs from Stevie Wonder, had Ray Parker Jr. as one of the session musicians in the early going. They they couldn't go wrong. And Shaka Khan's singing voice, that I don't know if there's ten out there that are on her level or could be said to be better than her. I don't know. She's she's a legend as far as I'm concerned. Um, Ain't Nobody was a great song in 1983. Um, and Tell Me Something Good and, you know, You Got the Love and Sweet Thing. Great stuff. Once You Get Started was a great disco song, 75. Yeah, I, I, I think sooner or later they're going to get in. Anyway, we'll keep going. Number nine is probably one of the greatest 90s acts. That's very underrated because they only had one hit record, Loser. But Beck, immensely talented, immensely versatile artist. 
You could do anything from funk to soul to country sounds to a new wave sound to a straight ahead pop sound. And sometimes on each album, you would jump and cover all those genres. Amazing, versatile artist. So he's, I think he was only nominated once so far from right. Deserves another shot. So number eight on my list. Here we go. Miss, Miss Christmas herself, Mariah Carey. But yes, she's had 18 other number one hits as well. Yeah, think about that. Hello? She has more number one hits than Elvis Presley now. And only has one less than the Beatles. 19 number one hits. 1990 straight to 2015. She's been an absolute force. Some people may not think of her as a diva. Maybe she loses a few votes because of that. But I think she gains some other votes because she has the most dynamic and diverse vocal range of anyone that's ever walked this earth. Maybe Minnie Ripperton might be the only one that's in the same planet with her in terms of vocal range. Um, and she dominated in the 90s. She was the number one recording actor in the 1990s. Anyone that's the top act of a decade, I think deserves maybe being rock and roll thing. If we're going to bend so much towards pop artists as we have in recent years. You gotta put Mariah Carey in. It's a joke. Uh, number seven, Judas Priest. Yes, hugely influential British heavy metal rock band. Uh, got another thing coming. is a song that probably just about every semi-pop music fan knows. Um, and they, they had so many, so many other things. Living After Midnight. Uh, uh, Love Bites, different song from the Def Leppard, Love Bites. And they put out a lot of other stuff that needs to be remembered. Uh, I don't feel as if they're on that, they put on the same, you know, level as the Def Leppards and other acts like that and the, and the Metallicas because they didn't have as many hit records, hit singles. It should not come down to singles. It should just come down to the whole general career, you know? I see a lot of people who only look at it one way or another. You gotta look at the whole picture, I think. Anyway, number six is Dave Matthews Band. In the 90s, they were as hot as anybody. Uh, they won the fan vote two years ago. Didn't get even get nominated, which is a joke. They need to be nominated. It's, that's wrong. Give them a shot. Well, even it's it's gonna come down to the board voting on who should get in anyway. Yeah. Number five on my list, probably the third greatest grunge band of the '90s, Soundgarden, behind Nirvana and Pearl Jam, who were both in. I think Soundgarden is an exological choice to get a, to get in. Get they deserve another nomination. They were great bands, certainly. Number four in terms of influence, who's the bigger influence? In, in the combination in when you hybrid rock with with hip hop, Rage Against the Machine will probably the greatest example we've ever had of that. I mean some people don't vote for me you know, some people are offended by killing in the name of I'm like come on. Get a grip. Get a grip. They uh <clears throat> definitely influential band. Tom Morello is a great legendary guitarist was very well liked in the industry i am very surprised that they're not in yet but maybe next year will be their year number three on my list yes automatic next year eminem besides being one of the biggest selling rap artists ever he's one of the biggest selling pop artists ever he's ranked in the top 15 on the billboard list of the most successful artists of the rock era which is 1955 to today he is just a legend all-time legend and you will get in next year number two on the list one of the two big huge jokes as far as i'm concerned from the 80s the ran duran who was a bigger mtv video act throughout their whole career and from 83 to the early 90s they were one of the most popular concert draws ever Huge, tremendous, sold-out shows everywhere. Ten years after their first hit, they're still rolling. Uh, they need to be nominated, like yesterday. The other artist that I still shake my head when I look at her on these lists is Pat Benatar. 
absolute joke that she's not, hasn't been in. She's been avail- eligible since 2005. Had her first hit in 1980. And it was a dominant force on MTV and on the radio. And had many, many, many big, famous, plastic rock and roll songs. And so she's number one on my list. It's She has to get in. Top three on my list absolutely have to get in. And there's a few others that are worth mentioning that uh, definitely should be qualified, but have been passed over year after year. Um, so that's where we are with that. I just wanted to do this video to let you know where I'm standing with the next year coming up. Um, and uh, if you enjoy this video a lot, please share it with your friends. Hit that subscribe button, and you'll be seeing a lot more of me. I'm going to start doing uh, reaction videos. But they're going to be a little bit different from the way the other people are doing it here. You'll see what I'm talking about when I do the first one. Uh, I'm actually going to be doing a list of my 1,000 favorite songs. So they're not really reactions. They're just my opinion of the song. And some sharp facts. Let me know some things about those songs you may not know. Alright, so thank you all very much for watching. And God bless.